Uh, in pancreas cancer, uh, when you go from first to second line, uh, you lose about 30 to 50 percent of your patients will never get to that line, unfortunately, because they progress rapidly, they become too fatigued, or they essentially, you know, uh, uh, die before uh, making it to second line. When you get to third line, uh, you're talking even about fewer patients, unfortunately. Uh, we have less than 15, 20 percent of the patients who will ever make it to the third line. In fact, that, that may be optimistic. I think it probably is less than that. Um, when, you, when you consider the goals of treatment uh, in the second line versus the third line, in the second line we do understand that we have a regimen that's active and that helps us essentially prolong survival further. In the third line, um, when patients would fail gemcitabine, nap, paclitaxel, let's say, and 5-FUMM398, in the third line, uh, you really don't have any options of, with proven benefit. Those patients preferentially, well, across any line, they should preferentially go to a clinical trial, but this definitely is a setting where they should go on a clinical trial. Outside of a clinical trial, it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, certain oncologists would consider full FOX. I actually would be reluctant given the negative data from pancreas, and I think the jury is still out on oxaliplatin. Uh, so overall, uh, your goals end up being a little different because you know that the options are lesser. So it's either a clinical trial, in my, in my patients, either a clinical trial uh, or essentially consider palliative care. I, I wish we can talk about multiple lines uh, in this disease, uh, pancreatic cancer, where we don't have uh, the luxury of going into multiple lines. Um, However, we have to be careful in one thing. Uh, the good thing is that, that we can treat patients who have received frontline treatment and they go to second line, and then there will be a, a small percentage of patients who will go to third line. But we have to also keep in mind that um, patients who go to second line and go to third line, they're undergoing some sort of a natural selection of um, the fitter patient who's staying and being able to get second or third line treatment. But having said that, uh, trying, uh, trying to give chemotherapy in someone who's been exposed to prior chemotherapies and being able to deliver it without much toxicity and without uh, apparent major de decline in the performance of this is certainly something which is welcome. And uh, this is why this regimen becomes an important one. There's another reason why it's an important <laughs> regimen, because, um, because we have been using over the last few years a combination of oxaloplatin plus uh, 5-FU. Some call it Folfox, which is what we do in this country, and the Europeans did a study which was called, o the combination was called OFF, which was still a combination of 5 fluorouracil and oxaloplatin. The European trial uh, showed some uh, improvement over 5-FU leucovorin given as, as uh, a control arm. However, subsequent trial by um, the Canadians uh, in fact, uh, questioned the benefit of the uh, combination, and they used Folfox. And in fact, in that trial, they showed that Folfox did worse than the 5 fu which was really very concerning. So at this point in time, we know that 5-FU-based treatment, fluoroprotein-based treatment, including uh, the uh, use of oxaloplatin plus that drug can be an option in the second-line setting, but we're also at the same time very uh, concerned that that combination is not necessarily cons consi or consistently showing activity. However, the Napoli 1 trial was a well-conducted prospective trial, and in this study we definitely are seeing a benefit for the combination. So that makes it a bit easier on us to start thinking of second-line therapy and sequencing treatment when we have a combination that has been prospectively tested in a, in a rigorous trial not only that, but an FDA-approved combination. Whereas the other combination with the oxaloplatin is not an FDA-approved combination. We always talk about nowadays second-line treatment, and many of my colleagues also are excited about patients who go on third-line therapy. But we have to be careful because um, those patients who go to third-line treatment are f further selected from those who are going to second-line from the front-line. 
And when it comes to numbers, they are minority, the real minority. We work in academic institutions. We get a lot of patients referred to us, so that might give us higher numbers of patients who are in the category of the third line. But in the real world, these are very, very small number of patients. But they exist, and they come to us, and they need treatment, and we have to respond to that. And, um, and in those patients, there are not many options, or, or I can say there aren't any options sometimes when, if we think about it. Um, patients who are, have started with gemcitabine, not paclitaxel, they can go on uh, liposomal inotecan plus 5 fulucavorin, and then they can maybe go on uh, subsequent to that on 5 fulucavorin and oxaloplatin, Folfox. That's one possibility. Uh, but we have to be careful because uh, as the lines of treatment advance, uh, how much left of life is also getting shorter, but at the same time, patients have to be considered in the light of good quality of life or not lose the quality of life for treatments that we know are not going to be that effective.